The Timberwolves are off to one of the hottest starts of any team in the NBA this season. And it's not just because of Anthony Edwards playing like a superstar. He is, but that's not the only reason they've been this good. A year of continuity and an offseason together seems like it's done wonders for this team, and they've gone from looking like a lower-end, middling playoff team to now looking like one of the bigger threats in the Western Conference. The Timberwolves have implemented an approach on the defensive end that has them as the number one ranked defense in the NBA at the time of this recording, allowing only 100.4 points per 100 possessions. This defensive renaissance for the Timberwolves can be attributed to contributions from up and down the roster, but probably the biggest factor at play for the Timberwolves is the fact that Rudy Gobert looks like he's returned to that defensive player of the year caliber form that we've seen him perform at in the past during his time with Utah. To give you some perspective on just how good his defense has been this year, right now league average efficiency at the rim is 65.5%. When Rudy Gobert has been on the floor for the Timberwolves, they're holding teams to just 59.4% at the rim. Additionally, when he's on the floor, teams are attempting only 25.6% of their shots at the rim versus when he's off the floor, where that frequency jumps to 35.6, a difference of 10 percentage points. So not only is Rudy Gobert defending the rim at a high level, but he's also preventing teams from even attempting shots at the rim in the first place. It's one thing to be good at defending shots at the rim, but it's another thing entirely to be so good at rim protection that you're altering the shot profiles of the opposing team. This possession illustrates that really well. First thing that's going to happen is this handoff between Trey Young and Anyeka Okongwu, and Trey's going to get downhill. He goes as far as going up near Gobert to potentially get a shot off but then he bails out at the last second to kick it out to Jalen Johnson. Nas Reed is gonna close out and Johnson's gonna attack, but with Gobert hanging out down low, Johnson's gonna pass out to Bay on the wing. Now once again, Bay is gonna attack McDaniels to try to get to the paint, and Gobert's gonna pull out just a little bit to the weak side, making Bay think that he can get to the rim, but Gobert's gonna come right back into the paint and block the shot to end the possession. Here's another great example. Hunter's gonna get the seal on Edwards and it prompts the entry pass over top. It initially looks like he's gonna have plenty of space to try and score, but Gobert's gonna slide over and shut down a shot at the rim, and Hunter instead ends up settling for a difficult turnaround fadeaway. This possession really exemplifies their ability to defend the pick and roll at a high level. Ant's gonna get hung up on the screen and with Gobert and drop coverage, it leaves him in essentially a two-on-one situation against Trey and Capella. But since Rudy is defending the rim at such a high level, Trey doesn't even bother trying to throw a lob to Capella or trying to get to the rim. And instead he just rushes into a floater knowing that Ant is tailing behind him. A shot at the rim is inherently worth more than any other shot in basketball, strictly in terms of the numbers game. So the fewer shots at the rim that you allow as a team, the more effective of a defense you're likely to be. Considering how locked down of a defender Jaden McDaniels has been since returning to the lineup, you can really see the issues that opposing teams are faced with. You have two very good perimeter defenders in Jaden McDaniels and Ant, and they're doing a good job of limiting opposing teams' perimeter opportunities and funneling them inside the arc. Once offensive players get inside the arc, then they have to figure out how to deal with Rudy Gobert down low waiting for them. Oftentimes, they're gonna find themselves in no man's land, and they're either forced to take an ill-advised shot at the rim, put up a difficult low percentage mid-range look, or reset the offense and just try again. To give you an idea of just how good they've been, when the trio of Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, and Rudy Gobert have been on the floor together so far this season, they're clocking a defensive rating of 99.5 points per 100 possessions, and they're holding opposing teams to 58.5% shooting at the rim and 24.6% from three. Some of that is poor opponent shooting luck, but it also speaks to their overall defensive scheme and how even when they are allowing threes, they're able to contest them so well that they're holding teams to an absolutely abysmal efficiency at the rim. It's also worth shouting out Anthony Edwards. A lot of people came into this season expecting him to take a leap as a defender, and so far I think that has absolutely been the case. Last year the story was consistently, yeah he's capable of being a good defender when he wants to be, and we would see the flashes when he was engaged and locked in how good he could be. But this year, 
that defensive effort is becoming more and more consistent, and it's one of the big factors behind the Timberwolves having this defensive success. And I know for years it's been a trend to hate on Carl Anthony Towns for his defense, but he's actually done a really good job of fitting in with their defense and helping funnel the offense towards Rudy in the paint. And it's at the point now where I really don't think you can say Carl Anthony Towns has been a bad defender. He's been pretty good this year. Let's talk about Anthony Edwards because a lot of people expected a fourth year leap from him, but I'll be honest, I don't think many people expected it to be this significant of a leap. He's averaging 27.9 points and 5.3 assists per game on a whopping 51% from the field on 20.7 attempts, as well as 43.2% from three on 6.3 attempts. That's a career high in points, assists, field goal percentage, field goal attempts, and three-point percentage. He has been nothing short of fantastic as a scorer this year. The obvious thing is the fact that his three-point shooting is up significantly, but it's really not just that. He's posting career high efficiency from three, at the rim, and in the mid-range, and it's worth noting that his mid-range volume is the highest it's ever been. I wasn't really sure how much Anthony Edwards was gonna develop as a mid-range scorer. That was kind of the big question mark for me with his game. I knew he would eventually be a very solid rim and perimeter score, but the mid-range was kind of the thing that I would get stuck on. But so far this year, he's been one of the best mid-range shooters in the entire NBA. And if that continues, we're talking about an all NBA caliber player. Potentially just as important as the scoring is the playmaking ability that's been unlocked as a result of Anthony Edwards understanding how to leverage that scoring ability to manipulate defenses and create opportunities for his teammates. One thing that I really wanna highlight is how much better he's been at finding Gobert this year. When they've been running pick and rolls and teams are trapping Ant up top or hedging against him like the Raptors are here, Ant has been making some relatively difficult passes to find Gobert on the roll to set him up for easy finishes. Additionally, Ant's scoring ability and transition creates a lot of problems for defenses, and with him keeping Dyson Daniels behind him, Valanchunas is forced to step away from the paint, and it allows Ant to have a lob to Gobert, and he's going to throw it down. This two-man game is opening up opportunities elsewhere as well. With the threat of Ant and Gobert in the pick and roll, both with Ant getting to the rim and finishing or finding Gobert, Jeremiah Robinson Earl is going to be forced to sink to the paint to protect a shot at the rim, and it's going to leave Cat wide open and Ant's going to sling it over there and Cat's going to cash in on it. On his drive here, Drew's going to move out of the paint to cover Cat and Porzingis is pulled up on Ant, and Ant's going to have to thread it through this really tight passing window to find Gobert, and he's able to draw the foul. The point here is that this is a really risky pass, but Ant being willing to even try a pass like this means that he's seeing these passing windows. It's really not just the starters that have been playing fantastic defense. Their bench is also doing a great job of holding things down. They're actually clocking the fourth best net rating of any bench in the NBA at plus 3.3. Even if the shots aren't always falling for this bench unit, the fact that they're able to play defense at such a high level really does a good job of patching over that. And it helps that they have, in my opinion, one of the most underrated players in the entire NBA, Nas Reed. In just 23 minutes a game, He's scoring 14.7 points on a ridiculous 68.5% true shooting. And it's not like Nas Reed is just a normal center off the bench. This is a mobile big that can handle the ball exceptionally well for his size, and he can take guys off the dribble on the perimeter. This isn't really the Timberwolves of last year where things completely fall apart the second any of the starters go to the bench. They have a pretty solid nine-man rotation that can hold things down. The Timberwolves are now at a point where it's less about what whether or not they're actually a good team, and more of a question of how good can they be? Do they try and make moves before the deadline to try and get better, or do they just hold it down with this core and see what they're capable of? Right now, they genuinely look like one of the best teams in the NBA, but the question is, can they continue to do this for the entirety of an 82-game season? And if so, is that level of play gonna carry over to the playoffs? But if the answer to both of those questions is yes, then the Timberwolves go from being a sneaky team on the come up to being a legitimately dangerous team to run into in the postseason. So what seed do you guys think the Timberwolves are going to finish the season as? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, first of all, thank you so much for making it this far. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more stuff like this, 
Be sure to subscribe, leave a like. Also, episode two of the Media Pass is out now. I'm gonna have a link to that in the description. So go check that out, give it a listen. We talked about who we think the big overperformers and underperformers to start the season are. As always, huge thank you to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. You guys seriously don't know how much it helps me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.